Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a part 2 of our Garmin G1000 tutorial. Let's get started. So last time we sort of walked you through sort of the basics, uh, kind of understanding what the different controls do, how to set your communications frequency, and how to get yourself set up with a basic flight plan. What we're going to do today is we're going to get a little more sophisticated. We're going to dial in a more complex flight plan, and we're also going to get in the air this time, of course, and we're going to fiddle with some of the automatic pilot settings and kind of get everything preset and ready to go for our flights. So as I mentioned before, uh, we're going to be traveling up to Gardner, Massachusetts, but I'm not thrilled with that little flight plan. I want to make it a little more complicated for us to kind of give us a good example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my FPL button, and uh, one of the things you're going to notice is that it has our previous destination. It tells us what's active up at the top, but what we really we want to do is we want to take the time to go through and carefully dial in each component of our flight plan so we have more control over it. Uh, one of the things you can do normally if you go to flight plan and press a menu is you can actually come down here and you'll notice you have the ability to delete flight plan. So if I were to come here and press delete, you could actually clean down this entire flight plan. Uh, for us, of course, that's not going to do much because I would currently have a direct waypoint selected. So what I'm going to do instead is come over to my MFD page and get ready to go ahead and get my flight plan going. But one of the things I'm noticing is this is a very, very, very busy map. I wish it was a little bit easier to read. So what I'm going to do is come down to the map ops page and you have a bunch of different choices here. You'll notice we have an XRAD if we want to turn weather on. We have a terrain mode if we want to do relative terrain to make it a little bit cleaner. We have a traffic button which will turn on traffic, but you notice there's nothing in here about making the map cleaner. So of course, you'll notice this other button down here that says detail all. Now, if I press that button, you can actually tune down the level of details. Now, if I go to detail one, you'll notice on my map here is that everything has been cleaned out with the exception of our destination. If I go to detail all, you can see it cranks it all up. So you need to pick a level of detail that makes most sense to you. I'm a big fan of uh, going to detail two because it's gonna give me just enough information that I need without getting myself in trouble. I don't need to see every little airway or again, all these grass fields. And one of the things you can actually do is tell it to ignore grass fields, for example. Of course, in an emergency, you don't care. You're glad that there's grass fields. So anyway, let's go ahead and access the flight plan page on the MFD. So what I'm going to do is take my mouse down here, where it says FMS knob, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my mouse wheel on it. And you're going to see that it gives me map, waypoint, whoop, map, waypoint, aux, flight plan, nearest. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to crank this thing over to FPL, and it's going to bring me to the active flight plan page. Now, this is going to require a little bit of fancy navigation on a part. And again, if you've been following along so far, this is actually pretty easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to right-click on this knob, which is going to turn my cursor on. Now, if I right-click the knob again, you see how the cursor goes away? That's uh, not good for us, because we do want to be able to change these values. So I'm going to right-click, and it's going to ask me for my origin. Now, just as before, we're going to take the little knob, because we're changing a value, and go ahead and click it. So what it's going to do is nothing. And the reason it's going to do nothing is because the origin goes in this line. It doesn't go on that line. This doesn't actually have any function. So what I'm going to do is take the big one, go down a notch, then use my little knob. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up the sub window, which will allow us to pick that particular location. Now, my origin today is Hartford. So I'm going to click right here. I'm going to type in Kilo Hotel Foxtrot Delta. Just like that, I'm going to confirm that it looks right. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. If I make a mistake, you can always press the clear button. If it looks good, I press the enter button. Now, the interesting thing here is unlike the other page, when you press enter, nothing happens. Another reason it will not do anything, of course, as we still have our keyboard mode active, is the fact that it was on keyboard mode. So make sure you shut that off. It's going to ask us for any particular runway. If we want to, we can come in here and say, I want to use runway two today. Uh, I can say runway two. And when you write it, you can actually press the end button. Now we're going to go ahead and dial in a on route waypoint. So I'm going to grab the big knob, come to this little slider here. I'm going to go ahead and pick an on route waypoint. So for us, I'm going to be using Bath uh, because it's uh, kind of neat today. I'm going to use a VOR. So again, I'm going to come down to my little knob, give it a wiggle, press this guy. I'm typing BAF, uh, which is going to be the VOR. Shut off the keyboard, then press enter. Uh, it looks good to me. Now, if I wanted to create another waypoint in here, for example, if I wanted to go up to orange or something like that, I could type that in. I'm not going to do that today, just for simplicity. And now I'm going to do is use the big knob and take me down to destination. Remember, it's not on the little lines. It's going to be in the big line. I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick little wiggle. Click on the button, and again, we're going to Gardner today. So K Golf Delta, K Kilo Golf Delta Mike. That looks good to me, looks good to me, looks good to me. I'm going to press the Enter key. And again, nothing will work, nothing will work. Shut that one off. Now press the enter key. Uh, we can select a specific runway as well if we choose to do so. Uh, we're probably going to go with, uh, let me see, it's a wind out of that. Yeah, we're going to do 3-6 today. So I'm going to press enter to accept. And you can see we now have our origin. We have our en route. 
and we have our runway destination here and everything is basically ready to go. One of the things you're probably noticing here, however, is the fact that nothing is actually working correctly. We still have that active waypoint selected. So even if I come over here and disable that, if I were to go zoom out, I will go back to the main page here, go back to, uh, we don't need to do that, we'll go to map. If I zoom out a little bit, uh, we've taken all that lovely time to get that all programmed, but that flight plan doesn't even show up. You know, if I go back to my flight plan page here, you can see it's all sitting there ready to go, but it hasn't actually been activated yet. That's one of the interesting things that we have is we have to tell our flight plan how we want to try to get there. And that's one of the kind of fun things with all this. Again, you can see it's still got that waypoint selected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reactivate the cursor. I'm gonna go up to runway two. Now, if you come up here and press the enter key, you'll notice nothing happens here. If you press the menu key, you'll notice that it brings up this lovely little page that gives you all sorts of fun little options here. And again, that doesn't help us. You can always press clear. If I were to go to the on route button and if I press the menu button again, you will see it gives us all these fun options here. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of these yet, uh, which is kind of a shame. But if I go to BAF and I press menu, one of the things you'll notice is this new button that says activate leg. Now, if I come here and press the enter key on this, it's going to say, are you sure you want to go from runway two to Barnes Air Force Base as a VOR? And I said, yeah, I do. So I press activate. Now you'll notice this new magenta arrow has appeared to actually tell us that we're going to be interested in flying to Bath here, which is exactly where we want to go. We no longer want that one. Now I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. I'm going to go ahead and flip it back a couple pages here. I'll go back to our map page. Actually, that's way too much detail. That looks better. And now you can see we've actually selected the correct destination here. Now, if I come over here, you will also observe the fact that our GPS and term here has been adjusted. Now, the reason we're term is because of how close we are. We're also got a bit of cross track going on here because we're at a different airport. We're actually at Meriden, we're not at Hartford. So of course, uh, if we wanted to, we could at any point go over there, fly over to Hartford. But again, this is just an example of things you need to watch out for when you're doing it. But it still works perfectly fine for us because I can easily fly to this and then catch it and basically ride it, which is what I'll do. So the next thing I like to do is I like to get everything set up for my automatic pilots. And again, if you're not using autopilot, not important, but I'll be realistic with you in the real world. I use autopilot to hold the wheel when I'm doing things. I usually also do not use autopilot for everything, but it is still nice to have a reference, especially for the flight director. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be picking a couple different components here. Now I'm gonna be traveling mostly to the east today. So I'm gonna select an altitude of 5,500. Now the way we do that is we found the knob link out. Now you'll notice there's two different sides. They both work the same way. We have the big numbers, the little numbers. So I'm going to crank this thing up to 5,000. I'm going to crank this one up to 500. And you can see I've got my altitude pre-selected. The other thing you'll notice here is now that that has been pre-selected is we have this little blue bar that has appeared to let us know that that is our desired altitude. You'll also notice that this is the color blue, which means it's selected. It doesn't mean it is currently active. Now that's pretty cool. Now what we need to do is we need to tell the autopilot how I intend to get there. Now one of the cool things you have here is this thing called the flight director. Now if I turn this on, you will notice two new things appear at the top of the screen. One's going to say roll, referring roll autopilot. And then one's going to say pit, referring to pit autopilot. You will notice that our automatic pilot automatically captured our current situation and basically said, is this what you wanted? Now, the cool thing here is I can come in here and I can actually adjust the reference point. So if I wanted to be really goofy, I could come in here and lock this like that, basically saying, hey, I would like to go ahead and use a pitch up angle of this just as a visual reference if you're in an instrument situation. It's actually kind of a neat little trick. The other thing we can do, of course, is we can actually dial in some of these different values to actually set it the way that we want to do it. Now, for us, remember, we're doing something sneaky here. We're actually going to be jumping over here and then going that way to catch it, again, for demonstration purposes, especially with the NAV autopilot, NAV rather, is that you're going to see just how easy it is once we get onto the runway to get everything else set up. All right, we're on the runway, looking pretty well settled, runway two. Remember, this is runway two at a different airport, which is what I love about all this, the fact it does not care. But the cool thing is, is that we're now going to go ahead and take advantage of a couple quick features here. Now, when we're taking off, uh, one of the slick buttons you'll have is if you take a look down where it says the word heading, you can actually push this button in by right clicking on it. And when you do that, it will automatically capture your current heading and actually lock it there. Now, the really cool thing here is if I come over here and press HDG for heading hold mode, this little guy right here now is going to try to keep us perfectly straight on our runway heading as we go ripping down the runway. So I'm going to go ahead and release my parking brake. I've got my flap set. Oh, we're set to take off here. Give us about half power here. Make sure everything's nice and stable. This is a very, very powerful aircraft for its size. I like their solution. Rather than uh, making it more aerodynamic, they just made it more powerful. Great way to solve problems. So let's go ahead and get running down the runway. You know, once we get into the air, I'll show you a really cool reason why we can get all these things set up and why it works so well for us. 
Give it a little bit of back pressure. Doesn't take much. A little bit of crosswind. Very nice. Very nice. Now you'll see here, if I go ahead and float down, is because we got all of our autopilot set up, it'll actually help us fly. Now, if I want to be lazy, I can actually press my autopilot button on my joystick, and what you'll see is the entire aircraft now will attempt to lock on to the very thing that I just had myself on. Go ahead and get rid of our flaps here. Now, this is so cool because if I were in an instrument situation, I now have a nice, reliable indicator of what my aircraft is doing uh, before I actually get to the point where I need to fly. Now, it's a good time to go ahead and talk about our little setup with our navigation. Now, as you already know, our desired flight plan was taking us from Hartford instead of Meriden over here, and it's all the way over here. Now, your instincts from other aircraft or different simulators is to run down here and press the navigation button, which should theoretically lock on to the GPS signal and take us in. But one of the problems we're going to have here is that if we choose to do that, we're not actually going to intersect it. And if we don't intersect the heading, we can't actually capture it. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. So one thing, of course, we could do is we could order up a heading in that general direction, which we'll do right now. And we can, once we start heading in that direction, we can go ahead and then capture it. So if I were to grab my little nav knob here and set us out, say, six zero degrees like that, just like that, it'll now go ahead and start aiming us towards it. Now, this is a good thing to point out that at the top of our autopilot control, it will always be telling us what mode it's trying to be in at any given moment. So for example, you'll notice that we're in heading hold mode, which makes sense. We're in autopilot, which means it's running. We're in pit mode, which means we're holding a specific pitch. And we're on alts, which simply means it is looking for an altitude, in this case, 5,500 feet. Now, at any point, we can override any of those modes. Now, for example, if I came over here and pressed the nav button, since our current source of navigation data is coming from the GPS, you're going to notice the word GPS appears in white. The reason it is in white is because we're not actually on course, which is exactly why I set us up that way so you could see how that would go. Once we get close enough to the course, this will turn green and it'll automatically start tracking it. Now let's talk about some of the other modes real fast here. Now you'll notice right here, we're climbing at about 120 knots. Let's say I want to climb at a specific speed rather than a specific pitch. All I would have to do is come over here, press FLC, and then I could use the nose up and nose down buttons to customize the speed I want to climb at. So let's say I want to climb at 150 knots, or if I wanted to be even better, I could climb at 110 knots, which is going to be my VY, which is going to make me climb as fast as possible. One of the things you'll find very interesting with this automatic pilot here is my ALTS mode, which just means it is ready to select my altitude once I achieve it, remains on at all times and it just changes our method for getting up here. And again, it's in green, meaning it is currently selected so that we know we're on that particular setting. So you can see here, we're going to continue our climb up to 5,500 feet. Now it's a good time to go ahead and show you a couple other things that are on our PFD on our lovely G1000 here. One thing you'll notice on the left here is going to be all of our speeds. You can see right now we're 110 knots indicated airspeed. We have 110 knots selected airspeed. Our true airspeed is 119. This is not our GPS speed. Uh, this is our airspeed. This is not the same thing as ground speed. Don't get those confused. The other thing you'll notice is now that we've crossed our 5,500 feet is that altitude mode was automatically pre-selected. It has grabbed it, but GPS mode still hasn't been activated because we have not gotten close enough to the different peaks. Now, while we're up here, oh, one thing I should have mentioned earlier is if you look down here, you'll see this thing that says transponder and it says 1200 off. To actually turn that on, you'd have to press this button, come in here and press on alt. Uh, the one that I use turns on automatically. Should have mentioned that earlier. My apologies. But now that that's been set, all of our GPS modes are clearly listed across the top and everything else is running very, very smoothly with our actual journey. You can see our speed is coming up very rapidly. Our altitude is fixed. And now it's a good time to go over here and reduce our aircraft to a little bit safer of settings here. But reduced to the absolute maximum peak, peak, peak here. Come down to 2,500. That's going to be our limit. 25 and 30 is usually what we can do if we really want to go racing. And again, everything turns green just as kind of a little piece here. So as you can see, our currently on autopilot, so we're approaching, there's the Hartford. Now you can actually see the airport that we should have taken off from a few moments ago, basically hanging down here. So with all those pieces of information, you should be in a really good position to be able to operate the G1000 safely. You should be able to use basic autopilot functions, and you should be comfortable manipulating the controls. In a later video, of course, we'll get into a little more detail and show you how you can customize it to do really, really fun tricks, like going to certain places at certain angles. Enjoy.